Hello and welcome to English Video Lab. I'm Amy and today we are going to take a look at a clip from the American TV show Curb Your Enthusiasm. First, I'm going to play the whole clip. It's about four minutes and then we'll go through it, break it down, talk about what it means and look at the vocabulary. Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> Oh, wow. What do you know? Look at this. Look who's here. I didn't know you were coming. I didn't know you were coming. What a surprise. We were just talking about uh, our trip. To Cabo. Yeah. For Mickey's wedding. What's the problem? You're invited to Mickey's wedding? Why does that surprise I'm you? I'm just shocked. Oh, my God. Why wouldn't he invite me? You know, you just, you don't invite a divorced couple to a wedding. It's a very combustible situation. Who, who knows what could happen? It makes people uncomfortable to see a divorced couple. You should two sides. Pick one. Well, you're both invited, so deal with it. Everything's going to be fine. So you're going to come on the plane with us, right? We're flying private. Yeah, we're all splitting a plane. Are you inviting me to hop on? <laughs> I'm inviting you to hop on and chip in. What? Well, you, you know, it's, it's, you come on the plane, you got to chip in. We're well, already going, right? People resent you if you don't chip in. I don't in. think so. No, no, I will a little bit, yeah. I mean, you're loaded. There's the resentment okay, right fine. there. Yes, I will chip in. Ted coming? No, he can't come. Uh, Why? He's, uh, he's doing another movie. Shoot. What is he doing? He's doing a comedy. And oh, um, he is so funny. So I mean, funny. nobody can make me laugh like Ted. His yeah. timing he's is just like, hilarious. Uh, I know, perfect. By the way, it might interest you to know that I'll be bringing a date. What's her name? Her name is Donna. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lovely, lovely woman. How many woman. dates have you had? We've had one date. Uh, One date? Yeah. And you're bringing her on a trip? Yes, I okay. am. Yeah. And you're complaining that divorced couples shouldn't come when you're bringing a virtual stranger? We get along quite well. All right, I can't wait to meet her. Oh, boy. I need your weights, by the way. What do you mean? For the plane. You fucking kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. It's I'm a safety issue. You the weight. This is a regulation. This is a Ask Jeff if he'll give you his weight. You're not going to give me your weight? She doesn't even know how much I weigh. Yeah. You know who else doesn't know how much I weigh? My doctor. My weight, my business, no one yeah, knows. It's very personal. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be dead in the Sea of Cortez than have you know what I weigh. I don't want your weights. The captain wants them. Who's going to disobey a captain? You mean uh, the pilot? No, I mean the captain. No, the captain's for a boat. He's the pilot. Well, he is a pilot. It's not a boat. But he wants to be referred to as the captain. He's told you, please call me That's the captain. That's on his card. Captain Garvin, He's okay? He's the pilot. How do you want to be referred to? Jeff. Okay, if you said to me, from now on I want to be referred to as Goat Williker, I would call you Goat Williker. Fine. Call me Goat Williker. Fine, Goat Williker. The pilot wants your weight. You can tell the pilot that Goat Williker doesn't give his weight to anyone. That's right. And neither does Mrs. Williker. The Willikers do not give their weight. No, I'm good. They're free. Yeah, <laughs> just because they're free doesn't mean we have to eat everything that they have. Oh, my God, you, you should know? see everything they have. They'll, they'll be talking about us when we leave. They'll say what, what pigs we are. You know, we just ate everything. Maybe they'll be talking about us how much we enjoyed their spread. They worked so hard to put up. Folks, sorry to uh, interrupt. We're going to have to make an unscheduled landing. Why? What? Something Why? talking about. Why? What's what happened? Nothing's wrong with the plane. We're just heavy. How come? Because of the weights. Because I asked you for your weights, you wouldn't tell me, so I had to guess your weights. And now, now we're over. Oh, oh please, why did you just have to put down for me? It's none of your business what I put down it's for you. It's my business. No, it's not your business. Your business. Your business. I put down the what same thing. What did you put down? I'm not I'm telling you shit. Okay, yeah, folks. You. Doesn't matter how we got here. The fact of the matter is that we're here now and we're overweight. We're beginning our initial descent. Please fasten your seatbelts. And that was our clip from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Let's watch it again. I'm going to provide some commentary. Uh, I'll silence the clip. It'll just be me talking. If you'd like to turn on the subtitles to understand better what I'm saying, just going to kind of give a summary of the video and then we will review the vocabulary. The scene opens with a man named Larry walking into his friend's house. Once inside the house, he encounters a blonde woman who is his ex-wife. Her name is Cheryl. 
and he was not expecting to see her there. The friends explained to Larry that they were just discussing their trip to Cabo for a wedding when he arrived. Larry is upset because Cheryl, his ex-wife, was invited to the wedding, and so was he. Larry thinks divorced couples shouldn't attend the same wedding because it's uncomfortable for the other guests, but it's really clear that Larry is the only one who's uncomfortable about the situation. The friends tell him that it's no big deal if they both attend the wedding, and then they start to talk about chartering a private airplane to get to the wedding. They discuss sharing the cost of the airplane equally, but Cheryl thinks she shouldn't have to pay because they're going anyway. The others insist that everyone must share the cost equally, and especially because Cheryl is rich. Cheryl agrees to pay her part. Then one of the friends asks Cheryl if she's bringing Ted, a man that she's dating, and she says that Ted can't attend. Larry sarcastically expresses disappointment, and it's very clear he doesn't like Ted. The friends talk about what a great guy Ted is, and then Larry interrupts to say he's bringing a date, a woman named Donna. He doesn't know Donna well, and the friends point out that he's complaining about divorced couples being invited to weddings, but doesn't see a problem with bringing a date that he barely knows. Larry changes the subject and tells everyone that he needs their weights for the flight. The friends react strongly and refuse to reveal their weights. They feel like this is a personal question and they don't feel comfortable telling anyone, not, not even their doctors. Americans in general tend to be sensitive and private about body weight. Larry explains that the captain needs to know their weights for calculations related to flight safety, and still they refuse. One of the friends, Jeff, begins to argue with Larry about the pilot's title, saying that the title captain is for boats, not airplanes. They argue about names and titles, and even though they raise their voices and seem to be angry, there's also a feeling that the argument is not threatening the friendship. It's more about being defensive and private about the whole weight issue, but it escalates into this tangent. And with that, the scene ends. In the next scene, we see the friends on the airplane and Larry's date Donna is snacking loudly. It seems to the annoyance of the other passengers. Uh, she offers some snacks to Larry, but he declines. She encourages him to try the snacks because they're free, and Larry feels embarrassed that she's eating all the free snacks. She disagrees. She thinks that by eating the snacks, she's showing the flight crew how much she appreciates their service, and the captain interrupts to announce that they will have to make an unscheduled landing because the airplane's too heavy. Larry seems frustrated because he had asked everyone for their weights, and now, because he had to guess, it's a, he's miscalculated and they have to make this emergency landing. So everyone begins to argue and disagree about the weight issue again. And then the, the pilot tells them all to fasten their seatbelts. They're uh, starting their descent for landing. And that's how the scene ends. All right, I hope that helped. Let's take a look at the vocabulary in a little more detail. So the first word that I want to cut to in this video is combustible situation. Yeah, you know, you just, you don't invite a divorced couple to a wedding. It's a very combustible situation. When talking about inviting divorced couples to weddings, Larry says that it could be a combustible situation. Combustible situation means um, a situation that could catch fire and burn easily, meaning the situation could become bad. Maybe an argument or some problem might occur. Somebody says, you're both invited, so just deal with it. Well, you're both invited, so deal with it. Deal with it is like to manage it or handle it or be okay with it. And it's usually in reference to something that's unpleasant or unwanted. Just deal with it. Cheryl, you're going to come on the plane with us, right? We're flying private. Here we see they say they're flying private, which means they are flying a private jet or they're hiring an airplane to fly them to their destination. 
Yeah, we're all splitting a plane. They talk about splitting a plane, which means to share the cost equally, like split the bill, or we could also use this to split the work. It's to divide something. Are you inviting me to hop on? Here we see Cheryl asking, are you inviting me to hop on? Hop on in this case is to get on something that is moving like a bus, a train, or an airplane. Basically, she's asking if she is being invited to join without having to pay. Larry explains that he's inviting her to hop on and chip in. Chip in meaning contribute money. I'm inviting you to hop on and chip in. He says, people will resent you if you don't chip in. People resent you if you don't chip in. I don't in. think so. No, no, I will a little bit, yeah. And the friends say, yeah, we will resent you. Uh, resent is like to feel or show displeasure. It's an unhappy or upset feeling. They discuss Donna, Larry's date. By the way, it might interest you to know that I'll be bringing a date. What's her name? Her name is Donna. 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 Yeah. Lovely, lovely woman. How many woman. dates have you had? We've had one date. Uh, one date? Yeah. And you're bringing her on a date? Yes, trip? I okay. am. And there's a few things about the word date that I think are important. We can use date to, to describe a person that you're romantically involved with, like, she's my date for the wedding. But we can also use date to describe the activity, like uh, she took me on a date to see a movie. Uh, we can also use dating to describe being in the beginning stage of a romantic relationship with someone. So you could say, uh, we started dating in college. We started our relationship in college. So the word date and dating can be used in a lot of different ways and it can be a little confusing. Um, so I hope that helps clarify. Yeah. And you're complaining that divorced couples shouldn't come when you're bringing a virtual stranger? She says, you're bringing a virtual stranger. Virtual in this case means almost someone that is almost a stranger. You don't really know this woman. Uh, Larry says, this is a regulation. No, I'm not kidding you. It's I'm a safety issue. You the this is a regulation. A regulation is a rule that's made and enforced by some authority. Okay, if you said to me, from now on I want to be referred to as Goat Williker, I would call you Goat Williker. Goat Williker is kind of a silly, creative name. It's meant to be funny. Fine. Call me Goat Williker. Fine, Goat Williker. Somewhat sarcastic. A goat is an animal. It is not the name of a person. They'll be talking about us when we leave. They'll say what, what pigs we are. You know, we just ate everything. He's concerned that the flight crew will think they're pigs. In this case, a pig referring to a person can mean a person who is rude or sloppy or is eating too much. Maybe they'll be talking about us how much we enjoyed their spread. They worked so hard to put up. How much we enjoyed their spread. Spread is a large and impressive meal. Folks, sorry to uh, interrupt. Okay, folks. Folks is another word that means people in general. Sorry to interrupt. Interrupt is to uh, start speaking when someone else is already speaking to stop them so that you could say something, interrupt. Nothing's wrong with the plane, we're just heavy. How come? How come is another way to say why? How come? We're beginning our initial descent. Please fasten your seatbelts. The pilot says we're beginning our initial descent. Initial is starting and descent is going down. So we're starting to go down. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know if you have more questions or if I've missed anything in this video that you think is important or interesting. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you. Until then, bye.